Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, hitting you with some of the latest news in the music industry at large. Cause as you guys know, yesterday was the Grammys, music's biggest night, and everything was happening. Killer Mike getting arrested uh, immediately after winning his Grammys, and also Taylor Swift announced the title of her new record, uh, Tortured Poets Society. Oh wait, no, Tortured Poets Department. Whatever it's called, surely such a thing would have come up with a better title. So yeah, all of that stuff happened, but uh, uh, today's top story is actually streaming services. They, they still, still suck. Because in the midst of all the glamour and all the lights and all the hullabaloo, uh, it's more important than ever to remember uh, that the system through which artists get paid and uh, try to make a living is very much broken. And while we usually talk about that in the context of Spotify, because uh, they are one of the worst offenders in terms of paying artists like trash, uh, having money to waste on all sorts of crap other than, you know, actually paying uh, the people that make their platform valid and, and worth it to begin with. All that stuff is still the case, but today we're actually going to be focusing on one of their competitors, Apple Music. Apple Music, I use Apple Music. All these companies are terrible. But yeah, if you use Apple Music yourself, uh, you'll know that not only does the uh, you know platform boast a uh, slightly higher you know quality for the audio that you're streaming on there in comparison with some other streaming services, but also there's this other aspect to the listening experience that is often pitched on the front page of the app, be that on your phone or on desktop, and it's like, hey. Look at these albums that you could be listening to that are new or classics that you love. You can hear them now in spatial audio. Spatial audio. I trust that Austin is adding effects to my voice here that make it sound like it's in spatial audio. <laughs> but yeah, spatial audio is this Dolby Atmos supported feature on the Apple Music platform, which has been offered to users of Apple Music since about 2021 for no additional cost. And apparently spatial audio has become a pretty sizable portion of Apple's streaming model, given that in 2022, according to Music Business Worldwide, over 80% of Apple Music users had uh, made use of the feature, which ultimately is fine and is cool. Cool. If you're a major music streaming corporation and you want to offer uh, the music that is on your platform in better quality, in HD quality, in spatial, magical, voodoo audio quality, uh, you can do that either for free or by, I guess, uh, charging more from the user, as long as maybe a portion of that increased price uh, goes to the artists that are actually like, you know, uh, having their music consumed by that user. That's fine. That's sensible. But as reported, by The Verge and The Financial Times, uh, what Apple Music is actually doing now with the spatial audio streams is they're going to be giving artists uh, that are part of this spatial audio world like a 10% bonus. You're going to be making an extra 10% on all your streams for any music that you have in the spatial audio program, which again, in concept is cool. Nothing wrong with uh, more money going to the artist, but apparently there's thousands and thousands of dollars of extra production costs that would be incurred by having your music mixed and mastered in a way to where it will actually uh, work within the spatial audio program. As it's being estimated in this article here, could be a thousand dollars a song. 10 grand or more for an entire album, which of course is a price that major labels can afford to pay and not so much the smaller or the more, uh, you know, indie tier artists uh, that are most likely not even going to make that much off of their record at the end of the day. They've probably already had the album mixed and mastered so that it sounds good on particular music streaming platforms to begin with. Now you're telling me these same artists need to spend uh, thousands and thousands more dollars to have the song included in a spatial audio program that will see performers and singers and songwriters getting a 10% bonus over them because they're uh, coming in with major label privilege who can shell out the money to have a record like, a, you know, Travis Scott's Utopia uh, played and performed in spatial audio. And what's even weirder about this is this extra bump or bonus of money that artists will receive for having their songs or albums streamed in spatial audio. It actually comes from a pool of money gathered from Apple Music subscriptions. So that 
extra bonus of money, which it's kind of weird to think of it that way because it's not extra. It's just being pulled from a pile that is now being made smaller for all of the remaining artists to pull from when they are having their non-spatial audio music streamed, which again, given the additional expenses for having your music mixed and mastered to be played in spatial audio, it's extremely likely that the artists who will be trapped in this now smaller non-spatial audio pool are going to be smaller artists independently artists. So this whole situation just kind of leaves me with a handful of questions. If this whole spatial audio thing is so important to you, why are the artists the ones footing the bill for it? And with the price point that artists are currently being faced with uh, in this spatial audio debacle, isn't it just more likely now that people making just bland pop schlock are going to be more likely to afford this thing? The point I'm making is given the relative lack of detail and flavor and, I don't know, distinct production on something like uh, the new Ariana Grande single, for example, do I really need to hear that in spatial audio? Probably not. However, would it instead be amazing to hear such a thing on a record that is a lot more densely layered and nuanced, maybe a bit more experimental or out there, or uh, isn't likely to net as many streams or, you know, gain as much profit because it's not as viral. It's not as easily digestible. It's not as uh, hungry for chart positions. What use is this feature if you don't hear music in it that would most likely be complemented best by it? Records like, I don't know, Oh, lingua ignota sinner get ready or spelling is the turning wheel. No, instead what we're going to get is a goddamn Lewis Capaldi song on it. And then on top of that, we're going to give the artists that can afford this whole thing more money and the artists that can't afford this whole thing less money in comparison. It just reads as really unfair and ridiculous at the end of the day. And music streaming services could be doing so much more to fix their models and fix their algorithms and adjust them in such a way to where it actually benefits the artist and actually benefits smaller artists. But instead, we're just devising ways to uh, take that economic gap between mainstream artists and artists who are sort of on the low tier or the mid tier and just, you know, make it wider, make it bigger. So we're doing that rather than finding ways to, you know, break predictable, boring, uninspired algorithmic trends. We're doing that instead of finding ways to curate that actually uh, creates fans for the artists that we put into these playlists. As many of them often see a lot of streams and engagements when they get their songs placed in mixes featured prominently on the front page of Apple Music, but it just kind of ends up being in one ear and out the other and people forget about the artists that they're hearing in these playlists. And yeah, we're doing that instead of just paying the artists more directly so that they can afford to do what they do for a living, do it better, do it more. Maybe if they made more money doing what they do, they would make more music. Crazy thought. I know. I think I'm going to leave it there. You guys are the best. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Over here next to my head is another video that you could check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Apple Music. What are you doing? Forever.